Our next talk will be by Robert Hansen or R. Snake about searching the invisible internet. All right, so uh, my name is Robert Hansen. Uh, I also go by R. Snake. Uh, I am a hacker. Uh, we do exist, we're real people. Uh, and I hope all of you feel like uh, after this, you are hackers too. So, um, so my job is a, a bit of a weird one. Um, back when I started the internet, there really wasn't a job called security. There was no, there was no way to do what we do. Uh, it was sort of a, a side task. Um, and it's, it's grown a lot in the last 20 something years that I've been in the industry where, um, there's a lot of people who are putting things on the internet, but they really don't know that people like me can find them. So for instance, you just saw Shodan with the internet cameras. Um, when I'm looking at the internet, I'm looking at it in a different way than you would, let's say if you were using Google. Uh, if you are looking for something like shoes or whatever, you type in shoes in Google, uh, and it'll find web pages and sites that are very popular, that people want uh, to tell you about. Uh, they're heavily marketed. Uh, there's this whole thing called search engine optimization where you try to get yourself to the top of Google. And you do that by a lot of tricks, by getting people to backlink to you effectively. So um, a guy like me is somewhat interested in what the internet knows about any particular website, but I'm actually more interested in what people don't know. Uh, as a hacker, I'm trying to find the, the edges. I'm trying to find ways into their environment. So uh, let's take an example. And by the way, I'm, I'm doing this all on my phone uh, just mostly because I find it very interesting to try to uh, try to kind of helps if the cord's long enough. So uh, let's say I'm trying to find something like, uh, like Sears.com. So Sears is a very large company. I'm sure a lot of you have uh, gone there at one point or another by tires or something. Um, but Sears is actually a much more complicated thing than just a singular website. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of different, uh, let's say, subdomains of their main domain. So any one of these things might be uh, a printer or they might be... Um, you know, a camera, or they might be uh, a satellite office, a sales office, or something like that. So you can see very quickly that if you look at the internet a little bit differently, you're going to start finding all kinds of very interesting things like development servers, and staging servers, and test servers, quality assurance servers, sites that people have put online without really realizing that they're still accessible, and people like you and I can go and find them and, and connect to them. Um, this is all public information, but it's public information that they don't necessarily know is public. They're not really thinking about it as it's being publicly accessible on the internet. So, um, so the problem is we know that Sears um, owns a lot of other things other than Sears.com. They own Kmart.com, they own Structure.com, and a bunch of other uh, things. So how do we find that? Well, if we start looking at different subnets that they're within, you can find things like huge blocks of IP space. Like this has uh, 42 records uh, in Illinois uh, in one very small block, uh, 256 addresses, which is, a, which is a small amount of space on the internet. So if we pivot and we look inside that network, if we start drilling into what's going on there, you're going to start seeing that they own a lot of other things. Uh, they own uh, shopyourwayshoes.com and a bunch of other thing, Kmart.com, which we knew about, um, et cetera. All of these things are potentially vulnerable and are all sort of on the internet. The other thing you need to sort of think about, so let's say one day I build a website, um, and think of a website sort of like a photograph, uh, and that photograph is the thing that I'm trying to present to the internet. Now, if I, uh, let's say there's a, a camera over here and that camera is then, there's a TV attached to it and you can see whatever it's pointing to. So it's pointed at my picture. So that's what's called a proxy server. And the proxy server is basically showing you whatever I have on this photograph. Uh, so a lot of secure, a lot of companies will use proxy servers to sort of uh, pretend like they're not located here, they're located over there. Uh, they do that for security reasons, they do it for performance reasons, etc. Uh, so if you actually hack into what you think they are, you're hacking into that thing over there, which isn't them, and so therefore it's less bad if something bad happens, theoretically anyway. 
So the problem is uh, I had to, at one point, build that photograph. I had, I had to build that website somewhere. It has to exist on the internet for real somewhere. Uh, and later on, after it's built and it's functioning and someone's had a chance to look at it, then I can take a put that on the video and have it proxy through. Uh, so if you can rewind the internet and look backwards in time, um, which means basically getting a lot of snapshots of the internet over time, you can sort of just look, hey, where was, well, they're, now they're there, but where were they, let's say, a year ago? Well, they might be here when they were building the site. So instead of connecting to there and attacking that thing, the attacker will attack this thing. Uh, even though this thing isn't where the website is anymore from a user's perspective, it's actually where it is. It's really where the photograph actually is. It's where the website is. So knowing how the internet stru is structured and knowing how it evolves can allow you to attack the real place, the real place on the internet where the thing really is located. Um, and so you, you think like big companies, they should know better. They should, this should not be something that ever happens. Uh, and so when I talk to an average company or an average organization or whatever, and I say, how many sites do you have on the internet? Or like, what do you, what do you think? Uh, so let's say it was an eBay or something and you go talk to, uh, uh, let's say the CEO, you're like, well, so what, what, what sites uh, are, do you care about or, or, or are on the internet? And they'll say eBay and PayPal, let's say before they got acquired or moved off. Um, and so that's two websites. Um, and then you, if you go talk to the network admins, they'll say, oh, it's eBay and PayPal and rent.com and a bunch of other stuff. And, but there's a whole bunch of other marketing websites that they don't know about. And you go talk to the marketing team and the marketing team will only know about the marketing sites and they won't even be thinking about all these internal assets or anything else. So it's not that any one of those people are wrong. It's that no one of them know all of what's going on all at one time. So that's, that's actually the crux of this problem. When you have uh, the, this massive buildup of websites and uh, entities, a company will buy another company. They don't necessarily know what they're buying. They're just buying you know, a bunch of people and a bunch of equipment. Uh, but really what they're doing is they're buying this gigantic internet asset archive of all this stuff that's accumulated over many years potentially. Uh, so... If you're trying to protect yourself, the very first thing you need to know is what you're trying to protect. You need to find everything first, and then it's very usually very easy to break in and one of those things. As a defender, as someone on the security side as opposed to the hacking side, uh, you basically need to identify where those places are so that you can put the proper defenses in place. So that's it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>